Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial series on kinematics. The topic of this video is position time graphs with a focus on constant velocity and motion. We wish to answer three questions today. First of all, what does a position time graph look like for a constant velocity motion? Second, what does the slope of a line represent? And third, how can the features of these graphs be used to describe the motion of an object? Let's get started begin our discussion of position time graphs by considering a car that's moving to the right with a constant velocity of 5 meters per second. We see a picture of the car's position at one second intervals of time and we've declared that the or origin will be the front tire of the car at t equals 0 seconds. So if it moves 5 meters per second at one second it will be at the 5 meter mark and at 2 seconds, that front tire will be at the 10 meter mark. And at 3 seconds, at the 15 meter mark, and then the 20 meter mark, and then the 25 meter mark. Now, if we take these times and these positions and we put them in a data table, we get data that look like this. This is typical data for a constant speed motion. The change in position is the same amount of change at for every one second of time. Now, if we take these position and time values and plot them on a graph, we get a graph that looks something like this, with the best fit line being a straight line that rises up five meters for every one second across. So what we've determined is that the graph of a constant velocity motion, at least this one, is a straight diagonal line, and for this constant velocity of five meters per second, it seems the slope of the line is five meters per second. Hmm. Let's look at another situation. So here's our second analysis, and it's for a car that is moving to the right at 10 meters per second. Its velocity is positive 10 meters per second. Once more, we're going to find the origin as the location of the front tire of the car at the zero second mark. So moving 10 meters per second, the position of this car, at least the front tire, will be at 10 meters at one second, and 20 meters at two seconds, and 30 meters at three seconds, as you see there in the diagram. Now if we take all that position time data and put it in a table, we'll get something that looks like that. And if we take this data, we plot it on a position time graph and draw the best fit line, what we'll notice is it's a straight diagonal line that goes through all of the points. And the slope of that line seems to be 10 meters rising upward for every one second to run across. That is a slope of positive 10 meters per second. So this is our second analysis. And in both of them, what we observe is that the, the, for a constant velocity motion, the line on a position time graph is a straight diagonal line and the slope of that line is equal to the velocity of the object. So now let's do a third analysis. This one will be quite different because it will be for a car that's moving to the left at 5 meters per second or negative left or negative 5 meters per second. We're going to define the zero mark, the origin, as the location of the back tire of the car when it's at 5 seconds. So we can mark off 5 meter marks along the number line and then since the car is moving leftward at 5 meter marks, when we go backwards in time from that 5 second origin position to the 4 to the 3 to the 2 to the 1, etc., what we'll notice is the car's positions are 5 meters at 4 seconds and 10 meters at, two, at, at, at 3 seconds and 15 meters meters at two seconds and so forth. So if we put the, those position time uh, values into a data table, we get values that look like that. Now if we plot those six points and draw the best fit line on a position time graph, here's what it looks like. It slopes downward. It has a negative slope. It falls five meters down for every one second across. That's a slope of negative five, matching to the velocity of negative five. So, once more, three analyses, we're finding the same thing, that for constant velocity motion, the slope of the position time graph is equal to the velocity, and the, and the, the line itself is a straight diagonal line. So here's what we've determined. First, objects that move with a constant velocity are represented by lines on position time graphs that are straight and diagonal. Second, we've learned that the slope of the line gives us some information about the velocity of the object. Matter of fact, we could probably even say that the slope of the line is equal to the velocity of the object for a position time graph. So exactly what does slope mean and how can we interpret a line of, with slope? In math, slope refers to the steepness of the line. And here we have a position time graph with four different lines on it. If you look at line number one, that's a big slope line, a big positive slope. If you look at line number two, that's a small slope. 
If you look at line number three, we'd interpret that to be the zero slope. And if you look at line number four, we'd interpret that to be negative slope. And being able to look at a position time graph like this one and see a line and interpret some information about the, the motion from the slope of that line is going to be mission critical as we move forward. Here's how I like to get students to think about position time graph. As the slope goes, so goes the velocity. So you look at the lines on a graph and try to determine what you can find out about the slope. And whatever you've determined from the slope, you can say the same thing about the velocity. For instance, if you look at line number one here, that's a line that has a, a zero slope. So that's an object with zero velocity. It's not moving. Then you look at line number two and maybe compare it to line number three. Two has a small slope, three has a large slope. So object two has a small velocity, it's moving slow. Object three has a large velocity, it's moving fast. Then you look at line number five. That's a line that has a negative slope. So that's an object that has a negative velocity. We'd say the object's maybe moving to the left. Then you look at line number seven, and that's a line that curves. In math, we'd say it has a changing slope. And so that's an object with a changing velocity. In fact, over the course of time, the slope's getting greater and greater and greater. So that's an object with an increasing velocity. As the slope goes, so goes the velocity. If you look for those objects, those lines that have positive slope, like lines two, three, and seven, those are objects that have positive velocity. Maybe they're moving to the right. And then if you look at the lines that have a constant slope, like line 1 and 2 and 3 and 5, all constant slopes. So those are objects that have a constant velocity. As the slope goes, so goes the velocity. We're several videos into our tutorial series on kinematics, and one thing that we've been talking quite a bit about is that there's multiple ways to represent the motion of objects. We have words that we've been using, diagrams, and now we've been using a lot of graphs. We have data tables. We'll have in the future a lot of equations and formulas. Multiple ways to describe the motion of objects. And One of the biggest things that you need to be able to do, the biggest skill, is to be able to associate one method with another method, one representation with another representation. And That's what we're going to try to do here. Uh, first here, we're going to look at an object that's moving with a constant velocity and fast. I'm going to represent it by a, a dot diagram. And then we're going to contrast that with an object that's moving with a constant velocity and slow, both in the positive direction. This one has a, a, a slow velocity, so you notice the dot diagram displays dots that have a spacing that's smaller. And now we're going to look at an object that's not even moving at all, an at rest or not moving object. It looks something like that. And finally, an object moving with a constant velocity in the negative direction at approximately the same speed is object number two. Now, what we'd like to be able to do is draw the graphs from the words or from the diagrams or from both. So the way we would think about this is we would think as the slope goes, so goes the velocity. So if we think about object one and object two, well, object one is fast and object two is slow. So object one's got the bigger velocity and therefore represented by a line with a bigger slope. Object two has a smaller velocity, therefore represented by a line with a smaller slope. And object three has zero velocity, represented by a line with zero slope. So we would show lines like this for one, two, and three. Now when we get to object four, it has a negative velocity. It's moving to the left. So what's different about that moving object, number four, compared to number one and two, is that number four has a negative slope because of its negative velocity, whereas objects one and two are represented by lines with a positive slope. That's an example how we would take words or diagrams and translate them into a position time graph. Now we get to the difficult stuff. It ends up that the motion of objects is not always that simple. Oftentimes an object moves in stages, that is it will move one way for a few seconds and then change the way that it's moved and move a different way. We call this a multi-stage motion. The position time graph for a multi-stage motion might look something like this where there's more than one specific line on the graph. Here we see three. We're going to interpret this motion. First we're going to notice that line number one has a positive slope and it's a straight line for a constant slope. So it's an object that has a constant positive velocity. If we compare it to the other straight diagonal line, line number three, we notice that line number one has a bigger slope than line number three. So while both one and three have a constant positive velocity, one would be the fast object 
and three would be the, or the fast stage, and three would be the slow stage. Well, what about stage two? Well, that stage shows a line that has a horizon that is horizontal. It has zero slope, so that's an object with zero velocity during that stage. So here's how we'd summarize it. Now, let's look at a second example, example B. Here again, we see a three-stage motion. We see three lines on the graph. The first line is horizontal, and the second two lines are both sloped, but sloped negatively. They're both straight, diagonal, negatively sloped line. So about line number one, we'd say that stage of motion is a, is a stage in which there's zero velocity. So the object's not moving. And then we look at stage two and three. The velocity is negative, like it's moving to the left. And we might say that two is a bigger slope than three is. So two is moving fast and three is moving slow. And in both instances, they're moving to the left with a constant velocity. So that's how we treat a situation where objects have a multi-stage motion. We are going to continue this theme that motion isn't always that simple. Sometimes a graph will display the motion of two objects and you have to compare and contrast their motion. We'll do a couple examples. Here's the first example. We got object one and object two both straight diagonal lines and object one steeper than object two. So what we would say is both of these objects are moving in the positive direction at a constant velocity, but object one is moving faster than object two. Here's a second example. This time the lines slope the opposite direction. Object one slopes in the positive direction, object two slopes in the negative direction. So we'd say object one is moving in the positive direction and object two is moving in the negative direction. Since the lines are straight diagonals, we can say that both objects are moving in a constant velocity. But since the steepness of line two is much greater than the steepness of line one, we would say that object two is faster than object one. That's an example of a multi-object graph. Now what we're going to look at are various uh, graphical interpretations that are troublesome to students. Like for instance, here's two parallel lines. What can we say about these two objects? Can we say object one is faster than object two? Slower than object two? Or what? Well, it ends up that both lines have the same slope. The very obvious difference is line one is higher in the graph than line two is, but the slope of it is the same. So these two objects are moving at the same speed or velocity. It's just that object one starts at a further ahead position than object two. That's why the line starts at zero time higher on the position graph. Here's a second situation, intersecting lines. What can we say about intersecting lines? Can we say at that intersection point that object one and object two have the same speed? Well, no, we can't because this is a position graph. So where the two lines intersect, that's where object one and two are at the same location. So it ends up here, object two is moving slower than object one is. Object one's the faster object, but object two starts ahead of object one. So at that intersection point, the faster moving object one has caught up with object two, and they're at the same position. And thereafter in time, object one has moved ahead of object two. And then finally, what do you say if you have a multi-stage motion and you see the line change direction? What does that mean? Well, that means that the object is changing direction, has turned around. It was moving with a stage one, a positive velocity, and then at the dot, it started moving with a negative velocity. So on a position time graph, when you see the line change directions, you can say, like, go from positive to negative, then you can say that the object was moving in the positive direction and now is moving in the negative direction. Now it's your turn to practice. Here you see a graph. It's a position time graph and there are two objects moving. Object one represented by the red line, object two represented by the green line. And furthermore, both objects move with a three-stage motion. What you have to do here is describe each object's motion. You got a real singer here. This is a tough one. So why don't you pause the video and think it over. Think of what you can say about object one and object two during the three various, three distinct stages of motion. When you're ready, press play and see how you did. Okay, we're going to start with object number one. 
And as we do talk about object one, we'll be comparing it to object two as well. So first thing we can say about object one is that during stage A, it has a constant positive velocity. It's moving with a, the slope of the line is constant, straight, and it's diagonal. And so that's a constant positive velocity. And we can also add to that that object one is moving with the same speed as object two, since both of those objects have parallel lines. Then once we reach stage B, object one stops and does not move during stage B. We know that because we observe the horizontal line. The line of zero slope tells us zero velocity. And the last thing we can say about object one is it's moving back in the negative direction at a constant velocity. We could probably even add it moves past its original position and, and passes by that original position. So these are the words that go with object one. Now, object two starts out moving with a constant positive velocity and the same speed as object one, then moves with a constant velocity during stage B as well in the positive direction, but slower than in stage A. And then finally, object two is stopped during stage C. So we would say moving fast, positive direction. We'd say moving a little slower in the positive direction. And then finally stops during the last stage of the motion. How'd you do? We've made it. We made it to the end of the video. Congratulations. And we've accomplished the objectives. We wanted to figure out what does a position time graph look like for an object that moves with a constant velocity. We want to know what does the slope of the line represent. And finally, we wanted to know how can we use the features of a position time graph to describe the motion of the object. And we've done all three. So it's at this time of the video that I like to give you some ideas of how to help you out to make the learning you've begun a little bit more solid. But before I ask, give you some ways to help you out, could you help us out a little bit? First thing we could say is if you liked the video and helped you, why don't you give us a like? Second, um, why don't you subscribe to the channel? we got a whole lot more content like this one coming at you. And finally, if you have a question, why don't you leave a question or a comment in the comment section below. Now, here's what you can do to solidify your learning, an action plan. And the first thing we'd like to suggest is to head off to the Physics Interactive section of our website. And when you get there, you'll see a, um, you'll see a kinematic section. And in that kinematic section, one thing that you'll see is a graphs and ramps activity. It's an awesome activity, really fun. You have to build a ramp that gives a ball that rolls along the ramp a spe specified position time graph. So you have to do a lot of thinking, a lot of using of this idea, these ideas about position time graph. Second thing, we've got a couple of concept builders at our website. One of them is called Position Time Graphs Conceptual Analysis. If you've never done a concept builder, you need to try one. Students love them. This particular one has you using some of the ideas that we've talked about in order to analyze a position time graph. And the second one that you'll find there is called Dots and Graphs. Dots and Graphs has you matching up the dots with a particular position time graph. Great follow-up to this activity. Look for the concept builders, go to the kinematic, kinematics chapter, and look for those two specific concept builders. All right, if you're a Minds on Physics user, you ought to download app number one. And when you do, you'll find three modules on there. And the first module is called Kinematic Concepts. It's the second module you really want to have. It's called Kinematic Graphing. And when you get to Kinematic Graphing, look for missions KG1 through KG3. Perfect follow-up. It gives you a rigorous workout, and, and you're going to solidify your learning probably faster than anything you could do. Finally, if you need a reference, we have a tutorial at our website. You can reference that tutorial and you can see uh, Lesson 3 is on the topic of position time graphs. There's three pages there in Lesson 3. It's the first two that you want to use. They'd help you a lot, out a lot, especially as a reference. Well, thanks for joining us in this video. Good luck to you as you further your learning.